Welcome to the Throw Show, Kevin Reichert. So we, uh, I know, I guess I should start it like this. Welcome to the Throw Show. We got our special guest, Kevin Reichert, in the house. Whoop. There he is. Sweet salute. <laughs> <laughs> Line up. <laughs> you wish you had that vanity plate. Oh, no, I don't. It was free. I'll be honest. Like, I probably wouldn't have gotten that. <laughs> so we got a... Kevin Reichert's here. Kevin has trained with us at Garage Strength since you were in seventh grade, I believe. Six or seven. Yeah, it was like summer after seventh. Okay. So he has I what I wanna I wanna go over your background a little where you've got a very unique perspective from sort of seeing Jason and Evan Arnott and Trevor a little bit go through high school and that first like wave of, of garage strength studs. Uh, even like the other athletes with with Pete and um, whoever else I'm forgetting, Mackie was there. Like all, all those like guys, savages all yeah. over the place. And we didn't even have that addition at the barn when you first started. So we built that addition. Um, I want to say we built it when you were in middle school. And you trained with Joe Mundell. So Joe was a three time state champ, uh, and he was your training partner pretty much. And I would say you were like that second wave of of athletes or the beginning of second the second wave of athletes from garage strength so you were sort of with us all the way up through graduation uh you threw 54 10 right it was 53 8 53 8 okay you have a great story that i want you to share in the in the next 20 minutes of what you did after you did not medal at states and then and then i don't know if i heard that that's funny and then you, you know, you go through college or you, you start college and you went and trained with Amin Nickfar at Southeastern Louisiana and you get to train with Alex Young, one of the best hammer throwers in the United States. He's an NCAA champ. Um, so you, you've, and then you sort of come back here and there back to garage strength and you see it where we've grown to and you've been, you know, you've seen us literally from nothing all the way to the point now where we have consistent post collegiate. Uh, athletes here and and what I always find to be very telling of you and I don't want to give you too much credit of being a really good guy is that you're like the one consistent person that even the guys that didn't grow up around you that that sort of train here on site uh, yeah using Rachel as an example they always love when you come back like oh Kevin's back yeah I don't even throw at the same time that's the I know I just pass through it's but almost still like I'm like just as close almost to them as I was with the training group when I was in high school. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like you're uh, Norm from Cheers. Yeah, just come waving, <laughs> wearing like whatever dumb shit I wore to work. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I, I, I want to start. I'll go over your athletic career a little bit in, in high school and sort of what that was like training with Joe and being around uh, Jason and, and Evan. You know, especially because they. You know, I even you you went to states with me when Evan won discus and and Jason got uh, second and Evan got third in the in the shot. Um, Road tripping out in the Red Dragon. Yeah, sitting yeah. backwards. Yeah, yeah, sitting backwards in a 1985 Mercedes station wagon. <laughs> um, so Kevin is the most immobile person that has ever trained at Garage Strength in the entire history of the gym. No questions asked. Not even Homer. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> I'm just going to own it. I mean, I... Dude, you can't even... I got strong ah, enough that I couldn't move, and then I broke my own back. Like, <laughs> muscles just pulling on it. I feel like that's that's pretty tight. He, Kevin's he, also by far the strongest yeah. high schooler who's ever come through. The program what did you... Too. Did you bench... What did you bench in high school? I feel like four, 455. <laughs> and I just went and just... Locked out and just couldn't. That was he it. front squatted like 455. Yeah, he, he zombie squat that. Yeah, because like after my wrist straight, surgery, yeah, my arms yeah. straight out. <laughs> he back squatted because like 550. I, I would thought. just pick pretty irrelevant goals to my goals in the circle. Like I want to beat DJ's front squat, and then and then just beat him. Just, just did it. You actually clean when you could still clean. I swear you clean like 260, 255 or something. It was like 137k. Oh, that's 300. Yeah, it's like right around there. Yeah. And that would have been like my junior year. Yeah, that was right like before. Yeah, and that was like I actually started to and like he would Olympic always, lifting. He would always pull things as high as he could, and then as soon as it would come into dropping, he would wet his pants. 
Because I knew every drop, if you're that tight, is either like you die or you get it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's either you blow your back out or you, you fucking get it. <laughs> I still remember, I think I might have been spotting you when you broke your back. And I, dude, if I remember, I think your left foot like slipped just a little bit. It moved a little bit on the bench and it was just, <laughs> yep, it's over. <laughs> His foot slipped and like butt or back hit. And then he, and like, he's like, ooh, that hurt my back. And like two months later, that just flared up. I kept trying to throw, and it would get to the point where I was walking in, like, at a 45 degree angle, just like, eh. I was like, dude, you gotta get this. This hurts. And he'd be like, you're fine, you're fine. (laughs) (laughs) So I guess um, all those great stories aside, what, (laughs) what is your, what, you know, what was your, when you first, like, were in high school and you, you came in, you would come into the gym. What what was it like? Like, cause I can't even relate to that time frame. Like when you and Joe would come in and they're out, they're out training. Were you ever at his parents' house? Or did mm, you I came just after you had just gotten into yeah. the barn. Did you and, like, come with anyone, or just uh, you? It was mainly my like, boy John Mish. Fuck the bro. Oh all yeah, that's true. Junior high. That's true. Uh, yeah, it was a it junior was like high football. Junior high football. I came one yeah. time and then pretty much for a month, six weeks after, was always like yo. To my parents, I think like I want to do this all the time, trying to talk them into, Damn. like you know, paying and helping out, and mm-hmm. it was just one of those things. Like that was, just like seeing where all the the kids at my school, because at that point it was, every kid that did a sport in seventh grade, every kid that did a sport in eighth grade, and that's where you got the group of Connor Saucer, Frank yeah. Melvin, all those guys, and then Joe, Dylan, Riley, Brett, like we, it was, every kid I was friends with at school was coming to the garage after school, and we were all. You walked down the hallway and it was a garage shrink shirts, and it was just like, <laughs> like that group just grew into that high school. Yeah, that's true. That came. That is true. I don't think there's been as wave of maybe Governor Mifflin now, but there wasn't. I don't think there's been a wave of like a whole grade. Nah, not like that. That that wave was. I mean, Frank yeah. and Connor were still at my parents' house. Yeah. So that that's what's crazy. Even Frank was talking about that when he came back. He's like, dude, it's crazy seeing what this place is like. And he's like, and I was at your parents house like the last week at my parents house so you did train you also did train with jocelyn a little was emily here when you were training Mm -hmm. okay yeah she came i think it was like my junior year yeah she started coming out so that's where it's like you you sort of been around like i mean all the best throwers that we've had yeah and then even to the point where we you know we worked with tim netow for over a year and now you're training with Tim's little brother down in Southeastern. So I think, I don't know. Walk, like, like for, for me, the biggest goal for me was to get you to the point where you would throw 55 feet in a shot. Yeah. Um, I think your wrist injury, your senior year, I think a little bit of mobility stuff. I think you, you should have thrown 55 feet for sure. Um, but I do blame that mainly on, on your wrist. I think and, one thing that was a testament to the training was that I – I was approaching like just over 50 feet. Then I had like the back stuff. And yeah. then I was approaching, like you got me to throw almost 55, like three times separately. Yeah, yeah. We're like yeah. pretty much rebuilding from this is drastically different. I need to, each time I was like learning how to throw again, which was something That's very true. interesting being able to like reset it. I didn't do and it. then, but still get to that point yeah. each time where I was. I thought, I, I was certain that you would end up popping something. Heading into the outdoor, and I we didn't even mention his his elbow. That was pretty rough. Irre- I mean, I only I know, even but you like still have like the weirdest. Throwing. You have the weirdest like. I've had your bullshit since like seventh grade, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just been because that never really affected. I mean, you well, see so it what, now. What and, is it? What is it? People show know. show your elbow up. Yeah. Uh, so it's at an angle. It's harder to see in a sweatshirt, but it's it's probably about five inches of reach. So now my my sweet probably six even wingspan as I'm a discus thrower is now like <laughs> like a crusty five eight at best. <laughs> yeah, just but I had only learned to throw after that because that would have been like fall of seventh grade because that was yeah, a football yeah, yeah. injury. Yeah. So everything else was pretty much learned after that. But I mean, you just you're a plethora of odd, just weird shit. Odd functioning. That, yeah. Yeah. Just strange. On top of that, I will say this is another testament to Kevin's work ethic is that. He's probably the best high school worker. Sorry, Jason. I don't want to offend you as high school Jason. The best high school worker that we've ever had work uh, at 
at Garage Strength. So kudos to you, Kevin, for Appreciate it. for being able to take direction well. Yeah, and that That's was hard. like, so I found out the back stuff, and you were like, can you go? You had me clean out the egg mobile, <laughs> bent over the whole time. I was like, yo, my back's like killing me. Turns out, like a pars fracture, and then bent over at a 45 degree angle for like eight hours straight. Scoop up chicken poo. Yeah. Uh, so, I guess like growing up, training with you know Morgan and and Evan, and I, what what I want to get is like, is it what do you how do you feel now seeing like somebody like Morgan that you grew up training with, and then you go train and you're training with Alex young and you see morgan just dropping bombs and it's like like it, it's such a weird intertwined web where his roommate competes against morgan and like and in, re- in reality in 2020 they're going to be going head to head yeah and it's one of the things is so like the high school coaches that i had at schuylkill valley like coach reiner had coached with munshine yeah munshine was at southeastern Morgan is coached by Lucas. Lucas was at Southeastern. Oh, Jocelyn was recruited by Lucas, who came here, who had just left Southeastern when he came to recruit her when he was. Yeah, at that's Oklahoma weird State. too. I didn't even like think just it. such a weird yeah. web of, of of people. But it was cool to see, because like regardless of the distances I had thrown, it was all environments that made like distinct groups of like good people that all could work hard, that all could, you know, like contribute to wherever they were at. So it was cool that. Even in, like, the frustrating times of, wow, like, this injury, this injury, that. I mean, I got ninth at States three, what, twice? And yeah. the 10th another time? Yeah. So making finals or being just the first one yeah. out. But each one of those, it was like, well, I mean, what, what most people will say that they ended up with out of sports is, like, the work ethic, the drive, the how to yeah. be a human being. So it was cool, like, in those moments to be connected to people like Morgan, Alex, yeah. And we were like, coach, like you, Amin, yeah. and now Matt Tholis. Like, it's been cool. The connection, like, whether or not it's, like, directly connected to throwing was really cool just to see good people being produced, like, all around me. And it's been crazy what some of the people have done. Right, right. Like, with, like, Morgan blowing up. Alex. Yeah, like, ev- everyone just blowing up. So let's go. Let's start sophomore year. Did you – you threw 50 feet as a sophomore, didn't you? Or was it – was that your junior yeah, year? I threw like fifty one as a sophomore. Yeah, and then that was when they were. Was Jason a senior, or was had he graduated by then? He was a senior when I was a freshman. Okay, so so using using Evan and and Jason, and I always felt you did a little bit better job than Joe did. Sorry, Joe, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> from taking their like their the reins from them where they they sort of set that precedent of like bus in their butt yeah and i felt like you take you took that on pretty well so walk us through like your high school career and then i want you to share the story of, of what you did in your senior year at states it was probably just the high school career was things like pretty much starting off where even in a dual meet if there's top five people and at that point schuylkill valley had it was tyler kastner joe even Connor Feeney throwing where there yeah. was like five kids over what 48 yeah between Joe. so even like it was tough for me as a freshman to get into a dual meet and go for points and yeah. that was just crazy at that time when you look at like how most schools are like like Jeff at Fleetwood is yeah. probably the best no, and then there's just a group does. of kids like competing the for the one through four yeah, yeah. so it's just one of those things where like even having to compete to get into a dual meet like really really sets you up to where if you just apply how hard like, you have to work to throw like tulpa hawken <laughs> like, stuff that doesn't make sense where then like school with if like you 50 apply, kids at each grade yeah, yeah so like if you they drive their farm to tractors just, to school <laughs> yeah. like working that hard to get into and you just keep that level of work yeah if it was hard for even just to get your foot in the door then just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it but it was just like great experience. I will overall. say too, uh, as well with this is that that was during a time for me where I didn't really have an extra worker in the gym. It was pretty much me running the whole place for the most part until Chris came. And at that time, that's when I had just gotten diagnosed with Lyme disease. So I was like losing my shit on you guys like every other day. Like, <laughs> yeah, like there was times where like I could be told by Caitlin like yeah probably don't say anything today and you just come in and just throw like throwing shit 
Like, and as you talk about the Lyme disease now, it's interesting to know because at the time we were like, "What's this dude's fucking deal?" <laughs> like we, like Jason was saying this like six hours ago. Yeah, like actually two hours ago. <laughs> but just one of those like, like what? What is he doing? Like how is this? <laughs> how is this like, not that it wasn't hard, but like. <laughs> It seemed like you just like got off on screaming at kids every day, <laughs> like just disrespecting people who were like the reason you had a job. <laughs> and it was just one of those you things that. On your it was just one of those things where, like, finding out that right before you were like crying in your fucking Subaru Forester, <laughs> for, like shit you had no idea was going on. My Subaru Forester. <laughs> you driving stick, drinking coffee, t- holding Anton. But we're blaming, oh, we're blaming this all on the Lyme disease, right? <laughs> yeah, it was, hey, all, it was all Lyme that's disease. That's another thing. <laughs> One tick did so, all that. So, <laughs> so, so before we get into the, before we get into the the state story, Kevin hit a soft spot with me. He texted me and he you got you got to share this the story of me driving driving the subaru so so he, this is when he, you had started to work i think that was like when you first started to yeah work. my mom was she would drop me off on her way to work at, at my Dane's house. house in leesport yeah and then i would ride over to the barn and work until it was usually until my dad was done like i would lift and throw right in the afternoon yeah and then my dad would pick me up when he was done at reading high and it was one of those things where like it was the day after i found out my dog died while i was at knobles like just one of those like, you're supposed to be happy, but then you're, like, the fucking chubby kid crying on the Ferris wheel because your dog died. <laughs> like, just get looks and looks. And then going to work. And Dane was, like, sharing the story how, like, when he lost Hurricane, he was in bed for, like, what, two, three days kind of thing. Yeah, just crying. And it was one of those things where, like, he talked to me through that in, what, eighth grade. Yeah. And that escalating to where, like, it was crazy when I talked to him after Anton. Rip. <laughs> <laughs> Like it was just crazy. Like that went full but, circle. But lay we this scene. Both. Just lay this scene of how you laid it up to me. He's like, I remember when you were talking to me about Hurricane dying, and you were really consoling me, while while you drove with Anton on your lap, drinking a cup of coffee, and your cell phone in the other hand, steering with your knees. Because <laughs> yeah. like he, and it wasn't even a cup of coffee. He held a full French press. <laughs> like it wasn't like it was just a mug or like something with a lid. Just an open like boiling pot of water. <laughs> It was actually, it was a French press. Just, yeah. And driving stick. Like, it wasn't even an automatic. <laughs> okay, so you go you go into States, and the whole goal was for you to meddle. And again, that was, that was, double A at that point was stacked. Um, you get ninth place, not by much either. I think it was pretty tight. Uh, yeah, because I think it I was... Think through, did you throw? Because Evan Blair is a junior. He was yeah, like he was still learning how to compete. Like his senior year, like he competed well. Yeah, but as a junior, I think in the shot, like he was just not there. Like at that mental stage, he fell out. To where he fell out. That was the only reason that I would have been like tenth again. Yeah, but then he fell out. So I was like, oh, like I gotta put it out there. Yeah, but I was one of those kids for whatever reason. I always felt great at districts. Like PRs were flying at districts. Trying to beat Jay Garinger, getting that silver in the downpour. Yeah. But then just stuff where like states, I never felt. And I don't know if it was a mental thing or a maybe just a little. Probably early. a little. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure, but what it was just one of those things. At, at, at states. I would say like fifty-two okay. ten. Yeah, I thought like it was that. pretty decent. Yeah, like I mean, it was all right. That, but that's a decent mark for like. I mean, unfortunately, that that guy yeah. died. Like that's. Well, dude, the year he got, the year Coon got second. 56 like nine was sixth place or something it was it was like that's, that's it was the top five or six double a guys would have won triple a yeah yeah no fourth place would have won triple a by a foot and a half and then and then guys did then yeah. i think guys came in as a freshman the next dude year. and that was a crazy story like indoor states and once again i was ninth so first place is jordan oh, guys yeah. dropping bombs so then Making it into finals, I follow Jordan Geist yeah. as like, <laughs> so it was like everyone going nuts and then everyone like going to get drinks and like using the <laughs> Dude, it was so fucking terrible. Like you could feel the air like leave the room when I would go in the circle. <laughs> and it was just one of those things. Was like, that to just follow. from you displacing the air or? Was... I, dude, it was. I don't know if it was how I walked up. Some like everyone was just like getting their phones out like. You probably like a laptop. Just nobody watching. So tell us a story about about when you you get you don't medal, and 
I think you even came up to me and you're like, I'm throwing my shoes in the trash. And I, dude, I, I, re, I was very upset that you did not meddle. Like I, I might've even cried like a baby. Cause that's like what I would do. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember being like, dude, I, I, I just wanted you to meddle. And you're like, I'm throwing my, like you, you said something. I'm like, nah, he's not going to do that. And then the next day it was either you or your dad sent me a picture I took a picture of it and I put it on my Instagram. Like that was my, like I didn't post a throwing video. I didn't still post a podium so we picture. That, we can cut that into the. I, the I, I remember that dude Because it's one of those things, and I got lucky. I went to an Adidas school after that. I threw away a pair of Nikes, and I was like, I'm never wearing these again. So it like worked out. I didn't have to go back on my word. <laughs> but it was just one of those things where I was just that like, you know what? Like fresh start. It wasn't like a, I was done. It wasn't I was throwing in the towel. It was a like clean slate. I'm done. Like yeah, yeah. This is not how college is going to go. Dude, and I think that's what's cool is like like I w- I was watching the promo from from last year's throws uh throwing the throwing the snow. Mm-hmm. Dude, he was moving oh, well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, like I mean, you, you threw hit a, 15 you hit a didn't PR you? at that meet, didn't you? I threw, it was like 1408 I PR by okay. like half a meter cuz part of what ended up happening with like the continuation of the wrist injury was that there was no actual like lever to push off of. So like as a credit to me, like I, my throw got a lot better. Yeah, way better. But then the more I put on it, the more I blew my hand out. Like right when I would get to release the throw, it would all give out. So, mm-hmm. like I would get faster through the circle, be moving better, be stronger, and still like the same distance but more toll in my hand. Yeah. Because I just couldn't put more into it. Yeah. I just remember seeing you, and I think he even beat Joe. In that meet, you might have. I'm not sure because he was he at that. I didn't remember because he no, was think, at the one that was that, in the dark, I, and I was at the one that was. I think your oh. P. I think that that beat what he had marked that in college. I think oh, it was close. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And, and that's when I got. Mad, that's when I just was mad at Joe. I'm like, come on. Yeah. Well, so tell. Why don't you tell us a little bit about like? So right now, you're at southeastern Louisiana. Yeah. And you have kind of, like, you've had this one thing I wanted to talk to you about is how you've had. Like, you've been through, like, a number of different throwing systems. Mm. And you've been with us at Garage Strength Throws You, and then you were with Amin, and now... Um, Which Amin's a two-time Olympian. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's and it was just, like, the odds of him calling you and saying, do you have anyone who'd be willing to go to Louisiana? And me just going, like, yeah. yeah. Like, we're just crazy. Yeah. Like, everything that kind of stemmed from, like, my, like, coaching lineage was just crazy, like... And like if anybody doesn't also, know, Amin is now the coach, the throws coach at Stanford. Mm-hmm. And he was recruiting Jacob Lemon hard. Yeah. He called me a few times to discuss. Jacob. Yeah, Southeastern's like a weird, like, jumping stone for, like, Munchine went to Princeton, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Then it was. Oh, well, McKay went to. I forget it was. Then McKay State. went to mm-hmm. Amin, not Stanford. Like, yeah. It's just been, and I'm sure Matt will end up somewhere else using, like, his, because his training has been. I've gotten different things out of each one that I've. And each thing's have things I've really, really liked. Yeah. But it's been interesting how each one of them has played into, like, who I am now and how each throws coach's stuff has carried over into the next one. Like, when I ended up with Amin, if something bad would happen at practice, I would look at him, like, glance, because I was waiting for him to lose his shit. I couldn't believe that he was, like, that genuinely, like, laid back. Because he's, like, your standard Dude, California. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, laid back, like... Just happy to be there. The so you're like, saying that genuine. you would look at him to lose his shit because you're used to me <laughs> losing yeah. my shit. Because like something like, like if the chalk got knocked over, a routine issue would just be like, prowler out for everybody, like crazy. <laughs> like, like you gotta go home, bud. Like, Dude, I think the the most, I think the most pissed off I ever saw Amin was, um, I said mm. I said we were out to eat this past year at USA's. And I said, I think that was the year Asan trained with um, Vestin. And he was like, puts his head up. He's like, Asan never trained with, with Vestin. And I was like, yeah, he did. Didn't he train with him? And, like, and I named the year. And he's like, he never trained with fucking Vestin. And I, and I confused him with, like, uh, who's a, I think it was an Egyptian. It might have been like Omar El Ghazali yeah. trained with Vestin yeah. for, like, a year. And, like, in my head, and I was drinking, I had switched them around. And I was like, no, dude, I'm pretty sure it was it was a Asan or Asan did it, had had trained with him, and he's like, 
no, he didn't. And he, I was like, okay, I don't think he did. Because as soon as he got mad, I'm like, dude, he's never pissed about anything. He's yeah, just a good I guy. Never, I never saw him even like almost upset. And that amazed me in a, what, two years yeah, and some yeah, change. Yeah. Like it was yeah, one yeah. of those things that was amazing. But it also very much so carried into like the training environment. It was like, I don't think there was anyone who ever got upset at a throw. Like a single like, damn, like that didn't go the way I wanted it to. It was always... This rolls into tomorrow. Tomorrow's a new day. Life goes on. Life's good, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's what I was gonna say. Is so like, what's the biggest difference between what we would do, even you know, persona, technique, and strength compared to what I mean, what does persona, technique, strength, and then what what you're dealing with now with not not that you're dealing but what you're yeah so with how with. I ended up like with what I would talk about is what he noticed in me coming from. This system was he always talked about you. He called it Chicken Catcher Farms and compared you to Dupont, like minus the, the, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. murders and stuff. Yeah, but it was just one of those things where like, he catcher. compared because he always said that chicken on the logo, <laughs> and he would always say stuff like, "Yo, did you cultivate your power this morning?" Like, stuff like that. Where it was always just like, yeah, it was just one of those things where I think the like here I felt stronger, but with a mean, I think I got stronger. Yeah, I think his stuff. I you never really felt it till like when I first got there. He said you're gonna feel good again in May, and it never really let up until then. But it was this constant stimulus. Like you knew what you were gonna, you knew what to expect, and there was very. It was an easy way to ride, a difficult one, but it was a predictable wave. But like your cycles, like you could ride them, but they weren't like there'd be different peaking things, different things. Like you seem to be playing around with a little bit more, and especially it was also much earlier in your. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think right now it probably is different because you were playing around with different things. Like, for instance, I think for two months I did more of that, like, Bonder Chuck style stuff yeah. that you had talked about with just moving lighter weight fast. Just to see what would For happen. a while. And then different things with going heavy. I mean, because I feel like I was one of those people. I always wanted to go as heavy as possible. So, <laughs> And I didn't have as much fun with the Bonder Chuck because I think I enjoyed lifting just as much as throwing because yeah, it was yeah. fun it came a little more natural yeah but then carrying it through to the mean stuff was coming in like strong but not really being able to move well he had uh the strength coaches take me for a day we did a mat day where it was like gymnastics type stuff with like tumbling and like all different types of like just movements that you wouldn't normally ever see like or the jab group did it but he threw in like the bigger freshman shot yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that progressed to one day was he gave me to their strength coach, Claire Quibido, who's now at Ohio State. I think she's in charge of their like Olympic sport development. And she would just rip me apart for an hour, like different like isolation things with like, I guess it was lacrosse balls and just all different types of movement patterns that the training was different, but it also really focused on like the mobility and the, the getting better movement patterns. That's what I was going to say is even, even to think about, and I, and I say this to Trevor quite a bit where I spent, I, I feel like maybe your senior year, I started to really grasp um, technique, like in an advanced point. Like when he came through, I just was like, let's just throw, let's just throw and lift. And Get like, over my left. That yeah, I would give him like two cues that Dr. B gave me and that would be it. And then it was the same with Jason and Evan. It was like, it was the the most minimal amount of cues. And it was almost because I felt like when I trained with Dr. B, like he didn't, he didn't, he would give you one cue yeah. for six months and that was it. And that was basically what I rolled with with them. And then it was the same with you, but right around like your senior year had been when I started to do a lot of the technical analysis. So by like the end of your senior year, I started to like grasp the technique more and more and more. And now I feel like me now compared to when I had had him, you know, three, yeah, just two and a half, three years ago. Like I, I sit there and I'm like, dude, I, I don't know how I had any good throwers other than the fact that we threw all the time mm -hmm. and we and we lifted a lot. Yeah. I don't and think then, anyone was throwing as many times per week. No, we would take 300 throws a day. Yeah, it was. So it's like, it, it it's funny for me because I'm hearing it and I'm like, dude, I was not a good coach then. I was, yeah, I mean, I was good comparative, me, but. Yeah, like you would give I mean, me certain yeah. things 
and you would just drill like I want you to move better and if I asked questions you didn't really explain deeper you just it was kind of like you were leaving it to me to figure out but I'm more that type of person where yeah I needed like like label it like draw it out that kind of thing and then Amin was more conceptual and more like that guru style yeah yeah where he was like you'll feel it out like this will happen just wait like this will you'll feel it things like that but now like Matt current coach is now he's a little bit more like he breaks it down and he was at lsu he before. before yeah he so i guess he threw at east stroudsburg and was a good javelin thrower there okay. i think he threw close to 70 and then i think he was with jeff at princeton as a volunteer and i might the time i might be wrong but then he was at lsu working with jake norris last year okay and it's one of those like he uses that i think it's boo shrek snyder oh, like that stuff yeah. jumper Jumping yeah, he uses you. that applied to the throws, which is really, really interesting. Yeah. Because at first, when I got down in the fall, I was like, it felt like I was training to be like in the National Guard. It was just so different from lift throw. That's yeah, your yeah. day. Yeah. It was jumps, hurdle stuff, sprinting stuff. Like each day, there's probably six areas you'll touch. And then there's like just pre programmed cycles that he manipulates throughout the. So he does like. I guess it's like heavy lifting day and a throwing day. And then, so he's talked to us about how he doesn't believe that, like you need a day for the cues to sink in. So like ideally you would throw four days and stagger them three apart or vice versa, like three days and stagger them with one in between. And that kind of thing, like it lets the cues like sink in for the day and then you come out the next day as like a new, like that model is like, it's like if you made a pot like out of clay and then like fired it and then the next day you made another one off that base. And you just keep building it. But each day it's like set, fired, a finished product. And then you, you rest that day. But it's not a rest. It's like an active recovery. You do a lot of different, you'll do drilling stuff, all different stuff. And then you, the next day it's you attack that and you build on it. Yeah. And then you let it cure. It's just interesting that as you build through it, like I've noticed that I don't, I don't have as many like relapses in like for instance if I was doing something stupid Friday on like previous models where I threw four or five days a week or it wasn't That's staggered right. How much or did you it wasn't was mean his was four it was Monday Tuesday and Wednesday was an academic or like recovery day where we didn't do anything and then Thursday Friday okay but I was also lucky my school doesn't actually have class on Friday it's a Monday through Thursday block so Friday is just a training day Wednesday was just a school day so it's really only three days where I was. Do people party a lot on Thursday night? I mean, a little bit, yeah. Like you'll have people going out downtown, but it's it's one of those things. It, it's hard to go out in small town. Okay. Like smaller like... town, Louisiana, when you're 45 minutes from Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, like you get the LSU perks, then you get like the party capital of the United States, like leaving out Vegas. But so it's one of those things. Is there's not really an incentive to go to like the village. You know, when you've got something like Mardi Gras happening an hour yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't really, for, and for the most part, the throws group, there was nobody that really, like, we all kind of policed ourselves. Like, we would do stuff like Saturdays and yeah. things like that. But for the most part, nobody was willing to give up the good training we knew we got on Fridays because we didn't have class. Like, quality, like, quality technical stuff on Fridays always outweighed, like, doing Jarrett shit on a Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you would say, Amin was four days a week. Now you're about three days a week with throwing. And just through, it's four days because he floats it just because he wants more time, especially for the people that, for me, I'm only throwing discus now. Yeah. But there's people who throw, especially at a small school, you have more people that throw everything. Yeah. So they can't just get one day in hammer or something or one day in shot a week to rotate through like four events. They end up. Like, it's a better model with four for how many events these people are throwing. Right. But for me, it's usually four just because everyone else does it. But, like, while I'm home, he's talked to me about three. Okay. And following more of that. Okay. So what would you say, you know, take, take you know, coming home and training around Sam, around Rachel, um, even around the weightlifters who are world class, and then training with Alex Young. What would you say are like the biggest takeaways and being around a mean too and and Asan as well? Like, yeah, like Asan lived in my apartment for I think it was six weeks. Yeah. So what what would just be things like that where it was really easy to be like, I don't know like 
what the fuck am I doing being around? <laughs> you know, like I was like, it was all right in high school. Stuff Had a little bit recover. of a chip on my shoulder kind of thing. But also, like, how the fuck did I end up around? When you look at like knowing David Lucas in high school, now another NCAA champ, yeah. being friends with Johnny Jackson, yeah. like personally knowing and having hung out, not really hung out as much with David as much, but talked to them a lot. Yeah. Like hanging out with Johnny Jackson a lot. Yeah. Alex, like the past three, the common denominator between the last three NCAA weight champions is me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's crazy to think that, like just having been exposed to that many just savages in what they do. Yeah. yeah. And it's just crazy. Like a lot of times, I think of, like, just think of it like, introspective. Like, wow, like this is insane. The, so like, that's why we need to I've get had. him to come back, so that when he comes back, now all of a sudden the whole group is just going to be. Yeah, sick. right. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's just crazy because even if you just soak in like one percent of each person you bump into, oh, yeah. like just seeing like the amount of people that I've been exposed to for. What I always say, like, I didn't fucking deserve. I had no, I don't even know how certain opportunities arose, but just, just but what crazy would you say, stuff. What would you say with being around Alex? Like, what, what's, cause I've, I've always envisioned him being like, like to me, he's one of those guys that I would want in my training group. Like, he's, he's mm -hmm. like the dude who, who doesn't, he's appreciative of everything. And I've, I think I've mm -hmm. only, only ever talked to the yeah. guy once, maybe. And, and, but just seeing him and judging from afar. Yeah. The way he conducts himself, it's always like business. He's a really good dude. He just seems like he busts his butt all the time, and he he embraces like the sport. He understands the the, the sport and wants wants to be the best that he could possibly be. And and I could be wrong, but that's sort of what my take is of him. So what would what would you say like is is like some of the biggest takeaways from being around a guy who is an NCAA champ? Like, being around, most of the people that I've been around were, they saw what they wanted and they got it and they attacked it. And Alex is, like, a prime example of that. He was the first one there, the last one to go home. Like, the stereotype, just, yeah. he was always there. And just certain things where he was, he's such a student of sport. Yeah. Like, for instance, he noticed that, I think it was his senior year or, fret or sophomore year, one, in, somewhere in between there, he had issues in competition, like with his headspace. Like he was not think he now has a master's degree in like psychophysiology. Okay. And he did a thesis on self talk. Like things that he struggles with, he learns every single thing there is to know about that. Yeah. yeah. And it was cool just being able to come back after training and pick his brain and yeah, talk, talk about where I was at in throwing, where I was at in life, and having him bounce stuff off. You know, it was just such a good opportunity to both talk and be friends yeah. but just to get to train with yeah. not th i think it would have been cooler if i also threw hammer but even just he still threw over 18 meters in the shot right and his discus was good yeah and it was just one of the his nuts to see at our conference meet he won all three it was just crazy to see how each thing he did he did well but it wasn't just freak athleticism shining through it was also he knew every like his room is like well, periodization textbooks and like anatomy and physiology books and he's just learning everything he can from like about everything and it's he interesting too because you you you're being you're around him and he he was also with mckay and then with amin so it's interesting to see his ability to switch mm -hmm. from one system to another and succeed in both yeah, you know, he was he, was, he was good with Lucas. But I think he was, before he was with whoever was a Gardner Webb before something Fryman. Okay. Oh, Andy Fryman. Yeah. Oh, really? So he started off college at Gardner Webb. Oh, I didn't even know. Moved that. to Southeastern with Lucas. Okay. And then had a mean for his okay because he was there. He had like five year career. Yeah. So it was just I think it was two or one at Gardner Webb and, and then, then two with McKay and two with yeah. I mean. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's pretty. That's interesting. So. I, I dude, I think he could end up being one of the best. I think I think he has the capability of being one of the best hammer throwers ever from the U.S. Yeah, and, he's just he's wired. He and he's focused, and and you can he competes well. I think he's got a pretty good understanding of the technique. His sixth throw is always something that everyone waits for. Yeah, because mm -hmm. his last throw at NCAA's, NCAA's when yeah. he won, yeah. blew up. Yeah. So what's his thing? last throw is? He's such a gamer on that last one, and it's just. It's awesome to see. What have you uh, What have you picked his brain about concerning like 
like mental approach to competitions and stuff like that? Well, so last year I realized that I had been training two and a half years with a wrist that was never actually going to push a shot far. That was one of those things that really kind of takes the wind out of your sails because I had an appoint- I had a meet at LSU, and at the end of the meet, my hand had kind of like curled up, and I had it was so much swelling that it I guess compressed nerves. And then they sent me for X-rays to see how like the plates and stuff had been doing in my wrist from the surgery I had in high school, and there was a gap where there was supposed to be bone. Like my body just absorbed my scaphoid, like just. To, took the calcium back because I lost blood supply to the bone. So they were like, yeah, I mean, the only option is like literally a 3D printed bone or a bone graft. And the only people who can do it are at like the Mayo Clinic at this point. There's one doctor who does that. And even if you choose that route of rebuilding, probably until your senior year of college, it still can't handle the stress of, of a shot put, mm-hmm. especially like a college weight. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things, looking at myself from the outside in, it, seeing yourself as, I don't have a big wingspan, I'm not mobile, I don't exactly scream, discus thrower, how do I take everything that I've put into and just keep rolling, keep moving forward into, well, new event at a very late stage of the game. Mm-hmm. So picking his brain, because there was a point where I was like, is this what I should do? Yeah. Is this worth what I'm going to put into it? And him talking me through like, and it wasn't always, it was never the answers I needed to hear. It was, it was always the answers that someone who can look objectively at something would yeah, hear. Yeah. So just him talking me through that period. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't always like, you should always throw. Track's great. Track's yeah, the best. Yeah. It was like, look at what you want from life. Look at yeah, what, yeah. are you still having fun throwing? And then also it was tough transitioning from. My sophomore year, I got an email in the summer that Coach Brady had left. And he's now the associate head coach. And he had two NCAA champions at Texas A&M last year. And then the following summer, I was mowing your grass and got a call from Amin. Yeah, I'm I'm out to Stanford. Yeah. Whereas it's coming back, new coach, first full year in a new event was, was, it was tricky. Yeah. And he talked me through any doubts I had in continuing it out and finishing out my college career. Because mm-hmm. for a while, it was like, what am I, you know, what am I doing? But then I bought, I trained with Matt Dolis for a little bit, and I started to buy in. Because at first, it was, it was the biggest change I've had going from coach to coach. Because mm-hmm. Dane to Amin was not, it was different, but it was still a similar building block. But the boo stuff that, Matt has is such a different game than what I had previously been exposed to that I was really, really more concerned. I was like, dude, I, this is so different. I don't know mm. if this is what I should, you know, to, to change this much this late. But then it just ended up where I kept talking to Alex, kept talking to different people, and ended up to where I found and focused on what I originally liked about track, going back to the eighth grade kid that said, I don't want to play football anymore. I love track. This is the best thing. Yeah, yeah. This is where my future should go. It's one of those things where he talked me back to that point, And then I just, I've had so much fun. I think more fun training this semester than I've had in a, in a while. That's good. Yeah. Just building back into like, what do you, what are you doing? Like for? at the end of the day, like you just put out the video talking about like, when should, when should somebody retire? When should somebody retire? And it was just one of those things like, Watching that, I was like, wow, like I really went through yeah. a lot of what you were saying at a point where I really had no business thinking that. I was 19, 20. Mm-hmm. It was cool, like being able to get talked back to that point and then just spring forward from that same seventh grade, eighth grade excitement. Yeah, that's good. So it was, it was cool to, to kind of come full circle. So thanks, yeah. Alex. Appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think uh, I think I want to ask, ask the uh, start the red hot minute. You can I start us off oh this? yeah, I guess I gotta go first. Mine aren't, mine aren't gonna be as good as yours because I want to tell the stories behind your question. I, well, I know. Yeah, I'm just we gotta do a get through a first, and then we can go back and maybe touch those. I think I have a, a, a decent first one. American House or the Village? Every town needs a village. No, doubt. no questions asked. Leesport Farmers Market or the Reading Farmers Market? The fairgrounds. The fairgrounds depends. I guess it 
I mean, on a Wednesday, obviously, Leesport. <laughs> then after, like, they out for different things. Well, Wednesday, I'm gonna have to go Wednesday, Wednesday at Leesport for the pretzel logs. I'm not getting groceries yet. I'm, <laughs> I'm I want, I want best food. Pretzel logs. They're right inside the door. That's my spot. Rage Against the Machine or Tool? Rage Against the Machine. Okay. Uh, one more. First gen Dodge Ram, Power Ram, or second gen? Cummins. Like that I've owned? Because no. I owned one of, not a Cummins the first time, but the red sled was missed, but that dually was pretty. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to go probably first gen if it's a crew cab. Oh, nice. I can't sit in an extended cab. <laughs> I don't fit in the back seat. It's over. You need bench seats. That's what you need. I wonder what the red sled's doing right now. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it was, it's scrap. <laughs> <laughs> that guy called me saying that, you know, your dad's name is on that, that kind of thing. He's threatening to sue me after driving it home. He's like, you know, I can give this back to you, right? He called me up on the road. He's like, what? the oil pressure was all the way. I was like, yeah, I told you the gauge sucks. Yeah. And then he was like, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. I was like, I did that. I, I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> like, you're now... You bought a kid. Or you bought a cage truck, and you're upset you didn't look at it. <laughs> like that was your money. I didn't force you to take it. <laughs> you drove here to get it. <laughs> it's not like it stopped running. He's like, well, the one gauge was a little weird. I was like, that's eh, eh, a bummer, bud. Like, have a good life. <laughs> All right, I got some here. <laughs> Lifting in boots or sneakers. Legs, Carolinas. Logger <laughs> heel, the best Olympic lifting shoe. All right, uh, be careful here. Pennsylvania or Louisiana? Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Uh, career, nursing or construction? For sure, construction. I, I got right into nursing school, and right when I got accepted, I was like, I'm not doing this. This is <laughs> like I had finally figured out what I wanted to do because I just chose the hardest path first. I was like, I mean, everything will transfer out of nursing. I don't know what I want to do. It's a guaranteed job. But now that I'm in more like business stuff, I definitely could see myself applying it to construction type stuff. I can't imagine. It's not that I couldn't deal with like open cuts. It was the compassion part where I was like, dude, you need to get up. <laughs> like people just laying there. And it's part of what I've taken away from here. Like, like if somebody's on the floor, you're like, get up. Like, what are you doing? Like... Could you imagine that? He's in like, the hospital and there's up. somebody like got an open wound. What are you doing? Stop being a pussy. Like there's urgent cares for this. Why are you in an emergency room? You have the flu. Be an adult. Be an adult. Why are you... Oh, that's great. All right. And, uh, possibly the best one. This is easily the best. Um, um, wait, is it, I wish. I hope Joe Mondello is actually watching. Yeah. Um, Pre-meet for co- shot comp- <laughs> shot competition. Would you prefer pre-workout or just straight caffeine powder? Like to the point of death? Yeah, <laughs> caffeine for sure. <laughs> Dude, I thought my heart was going to stop. Can you, you that's us, another thing. Just reckless abandonment. No, that is not. That was your fault. Yes, I'm glad. You were trying to that's run at me. You had right no now. idea how to run. I and told just, them. Here's a, here's a bag of caffeine powder. <laughs> Who gives a kid that? Of course you're going to take the same proportion you take of pre-workout. You know, because, like, I'm not the one they who has any idea what I'm taking. Cap. They like, took a full cap. cap. And I, I calculated said, it. I weighed out what I would s- fit on that later. It was 157 a pinch, cups of coffee. A pinch. <laughs> I said, take a pinch of caffeine and put it in their drink. And then they come out, and Joe's like, my, my, and I know Joe, Joe's, like, over-exaggerating. But at the same time, I was like, wait, how much did you have? And Kevin's like... His eyes are like wide open. <laughs> He's like you're just smelling sounds, like pre, like everything just flowing at you. Your heart pounding through your chest. I took like two throws and I was like, I need to go lay down. And He's of course like, it was the meet where Durrell was there, Ryan White. Durrell was there, there Ryan <laughs> White. I'm in there on the turf, Pat, laying on the ground. Pat Evil's sweating. there. Pat Evil's there to recruit Joe. <laughs> and Joe's like takes three throws. He's like, I gotta go home. And he went home and laid in his basement. And then he I couldn't drive home. I had to get a ride. Yeah, like my mom had to come pick me up, and I left. I think you had. There. I think so. So you had a full cap. It was a mounded cap. Oh, and we calculated caffeine. like we weighed it out after. So it was a, the equivalent, the caffeine equivalent of 157 cups of coffee. 
Four hundred milligrams would be about a, a very substantial pinch. And I was just like, "All right, Dane," and just threw it back. <laughs> and I just remember, and just, I remember Jocelyn being like, "What is their deal? Like, what a bunch of babies!" And I was like, "No, I don't want to tell you what happened. Like, they took way too much caffeine." I don't know how. Like, what did that even taste like in your mouth? Uh, it had to be horrible. Like, caffeine's so it. bitter. Like, yeah, it had to be terrible. But like, I'm also a, like from a very not young age, but young enough. Like took creatine, took whatever, yeah. just straight. Like it wasn't, it wasn't as big of a shock as it should have been. And look sure. at him; he doesn't, he doesn't mind taste. Yeah, <laughs> we're doing all right. But it's one of those things where I think if I was, if I right. wasn't husky, you dude, I would have died. My heart would have fucking yeah. stopped. Oh jeez, like if sad. I was, if I was Ryan, the mayor of Crumbsville, I'd be six feet under right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, I he, forgot about that kid. Dude, he's still in office, dude. Just out there getting it done. Do you remember the people him? by the people. Do you remember that kid? Wait, what was his last? No, don't say Ryan. There was a kid, Ryan, and we used to say he was the mayor of Crumbsville. Yeah, because he always was just he drove from Crumbsville. Yeah, yeah, he and Jocelyn so he went, were both from Crumbsville, and he we just drove he, out and he got went to shit Becca done High. every day. He went to Becca High, and he would come out and throw. Why did he didn't go to Cutstown? No, no, he went to Becca. Like he ended up throwing like, like forty. Well, for what he was doing, but no, like he always just him. showed up yeah, and just fucking got it done. Yeah, and he would, he like, we got it out of him once that he knew exactly where Jocelyn lived, and she was like, how does he know where I live? And he was yeah. like giggling. Yeah, he's like, I followed you. Like, yeah. just like the creepiest. <laughs> All right, that's, that's, uh, uh thank, thanks for uh, sharing these great, it's almost like we should have just a huge log of these ridiculous stories, because I yeah. think about the stories that you have, the stories that he had, he's like a vault of ridiculous stories. And yeah, I just remember, like, everything. I remember all the ridiculous stuff from going back from, like, like That's it. You're grade. at such an impressionable stage, whereas, dude, I don't even remember half of this stuff. Wait, can I say something? I got a question for Kevin, because I know you wanted to, you want to ask it. What's your perspective on when I hit Evan with a weight? Oh, shit. Yeah, because oh, so you were there. there, weren't you? Yeah. Because so I had the vantage point of being able to see. Like, there was that corner next to the office. Dude, so this wait, is... There wait, was wait, Tina, let me, let me Kendra, this, yeah. and Mr. I was, I was spotting Tina on incline bench down by the office. So this is Bob Stout, the tree guy's wife. I don't yeah. know if you remember her. She's Tina, doing, Kendra, and Mrs. Riker. Yeah, and then it's like them and and Jason and Evan. And she's doing bench, and I hear them, they were doing drills into the wall. Uh, like, and that's probably why they threw wells, because we just would do t thousands of drills into the wall, throwing, doing half turns, throwing into the wall. Because the wall crumbled, so it gave and, feedback. And the shot swing. <laughs> but anyway, I hear like this, them yelling at each other, and he was standing there with Jason, and, and some, somehow he actually started the whole thing, I think. Probably. I honestly don't remember the fight. I, I think just... he had started the whole thing because you. It stemmed from the night before when. Yeah, you asked when the Evan made fun of Coon at yoga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evan made fun of Coon at yoga, <laughs> and, and then, then you brought it up that day. So I, that's yeah. what happened. And Evan started laughing. Evan started laughing. They made fun they were... of yoga again. Said something about like hand tire, something crazy. Yeah, that's what it was. Then, that's what it was. Look what I got, fucker. Dumbbell coming yeah, in. Yeah, so like... I'm standing there spotting <laughs> Tina. She's dumbbell inclining like the 25s and she's like, what's going on back there? And I was like, I don't know. And I turn around. Coon's like fuming, grabs his dumbbell and he goes, look what I have, fucker. <laughs> Throws the dumbbell. No, he swings and Evan goes like this. Yeah, and it he... hits him in the lat. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Would have been a headshot. Then he takes, and I'm looking at him like, I was like trying to process what was going on. Grabs Evan by like his shoulders and he goes, boom, boom, boom. Headbutts him like three <laughs> times. And Evan's, Headbutts, like, Evan's like, what the heck is wrong with you? Get off me, get off me. Like screaming. Because you know when someone headbutts you, they have nothing to lose. Yeah. <laughs> like if their first weapon is their forehead. Their first weapon. Like, so then, that's no one's first move. I like, was like, cool. And what was funny is that Caitlin was coming to train for that night because it was Noel Kuntz and Jackie McDevitt's senior swim night. And I had never gone to a meet. And I trained them for like four years. So I was like, I'm leaving shortly. She comes in. And like, as she comes in, 
he sprints out, slams the door open, and run, runs. And then I had to go talk to him at his at his mom's house and be like, "Dude, what is going on?" And I get there, and he's thinking that he's gonna get arrested. But your yeah. perspective, what what was like, just standing there thinking like, little did I know, like had that like actually connected, like knowing more about like watching different like fights and stuff like that, like it had that. Had he not ducked, he'd be like shooting porn from a wheelchair now. <laughs> it, had that gone through, that would be like just instantly. I think you would have had to just like give Rant back the barn. Like, yeah, we're going. We're, we're going somewhere. Like, yeah, we're. I'm out. Sorry. Back to ISS or whatever. <laughs> just, we're at, we're done. I've never done this. Yeah, but it was just so crazy seeing like just standing in the middle of the turf. From your office or like the box that you used to have all your shit on. <laughs> and then just watching the best part was like Mrs. Riker's reaction and like watching their, two, just like two state champions just get into a brawl. That's what's crazy. He's thinking about it. He threw basically sixty feet and Evan threw hundred and ninety five eleven. Yeah. And they're just brawling about <laughs> about about a yoga comment. Yeah. About just it had just built yeah, and that's what it was. It was. It, it I was so out. glad that not that I ever thought that Joe and I would get to that point, but like once we got past that timeline, I was so glad that that never we had down. not. Yeah, that you we had never really dumbbells. disagreed because I would for sure would have been the one throwing dumbbells. <laughs> like I was the coon in that in the relationship. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Isn't that a weird parallel? Yeah, no, no, I think. Mean, him and Joe, me and Evan. I think it's identical. Dude, we even both had 12 valves. Like, it was down to the car. <laughs> That's true, anyway. I didn't even yeah, think about that. Yeah, it was weird. All right, so on that note, Kevin, thanks for being on the throw yeah, show. Thanks. <laughs> Peace.